Hello, we've got a bit of a different vlog this time. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I spent a lovely weekend teaching a printing workshop at Hope and Elvis, uh, and that was on the last vlog, I think, the vlog before. Now, while we were doing that, on the Sunday morning, I had a chat with Louise, who um, runs Hope and Elvis, and she's recently started to share her artwork and she's a wonderful artist and we yeah we just got chatting about it and I think it turned into a really interesting discussion especially about being brave taking the next steps on your journey to sharing whatever creative work that you produce because that's a big step um, and yeah, I don't want to talk too long. I want to dive straight in. Um, there were lots of laughs as well. Um, I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm privileged to say that she's one of my very good friends. And um, thank you, Louise, as well, for sharing your thoughts. And uh, I hope you enjoy. <laughs> it's great to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Louise. What have you done to the babies? I've melted the babies. <laughs> it looks quite intimate there. Cozy set up. Do you want to lower it a little bit? Oh, okay. Okay. Must <laughs> I sit on a cushion? Yeah, and I need to sit yeah. a bit nearer. You I sit on my knees. Yes, that's better. That's better. <sighs> Right. Oh look, almost tall. Right. We're filming. Now. We're filming. Right. right. Okay. So, what I think you've been really brave, and you've you've started your own work. You're telling your own stories, which takes a lot of guts. I found it. Really, it took me a long time to start telling the stories about my work. Yeah. But then it really connects with people, and I think other people kind of appreciate that that you're sharing because then other people are like oh god yeah i have like these stories or i whatever and people can share that if someone's feeling like they want to start could be writing music or anything what bit of advice would you give them it's difficult to be brave and it's difficult to find to see worth in anything you do because everybody's it's like the imposter syndrome thing, but do it anyway, because what's the worst that can happen? You haven't got you haven't got to share anything. Yeah. What's the she worst? Might not, she might not agree to that one. But sorry. sorry. Give it more thought next time. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, but just do it because if you don't do it, what what then? Exactly. It's worse not to than to do it. Oh, is that thing? I love that. Oh, is that thing? Say it again. I can't say that. It's worth not to. It's worth not to. First. And then. And then work. And then. So I'll make a 3D person first. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think of a story first or do you just make and then things happen? I make a doll first. Ah, okay. Who's this? This is Winter. Oh, hello, Winter. So she's, because I stitched her over Christmas. They all start out the same shape. Yeah. And then they all kind of change. So then Winter, um, <laughs> Winter works at the fair on the coconut shy stall. <laughs> Is that what inspired a hairstyle? Yeah. So did a hairstyle come first and then the coconut the shack? The hairstyle came first. Mm. I knew that she was winter because I, I stitched her in the winter. Yeah. And um, and she's quite complicated and she's got really strong eyebrows. I do like a woman with a strong <laughs> eyebrow. Yeah, I like a good brow. Do you like a good brow? Yeah. Yeah, so she runs the coconut shack stall. Um, and she has to be very good at it because they're quite weird at the fair and they can change your jobs and she does not want to work on waltzes. Oh no. No. It's too much sick involved. <laughs> so 
so so that's that's winter. <laughs> Asha. Yes. I'd love to know about your practice. We're in oh your studio. T tell us about tell us about right. your fantastical characters and what you do. Okay, well, this part of Hope and Elvis is my secret part of Hope and Elvis. It's like a in the know type of space um, where uh, my imagination is allowed to, you know, take me places that I don't generally share. But you've started sharing now, haven't you, Louise? A little bit. <laughs> Where can we find your work? Ooh. <laughs> um, you can find me on Instagram uh, under Lou Ash Art. Right, and I'll put a tag in here. I can do that. Oh, he's gone for film it. It'll come up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yes. So I sh I've started to share my work there because at first I put it on and didn't have a live, nobody could follow me. No. At all. Not even the kids. And then I, I put it, not intentionally, I just put it out there and I put a note on saying, I didn't really want anybody to look, but if you found me then hello, but don't tell anybody else. Mm -hmm. I think did, that's did too people, Did way. people accidentally find you that way? Yeah. Because that's kind I of like the way you told not to do it at all, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I didn't... I wanted to be brave and put it out there, but I didn't feel brave enough. So by doing it and not telling anybody, I felt like if people accidentally fell on it, then that's lovely. Mm. But I didn't want it to... Because I've got quite a big following over on Hope and Elvis, it would have been quite easy to share it on there yeah. quite heavily and think, oh, go and look at this, go and look at this. But I wasn't, and I don't think I still probably am in that kind of space where I want to let it all out. Mm. Just little, yeah, little tiny baby. But that's steps. a really good way of doing it, though, isn't it? Because that was like the first step. Mm. And a lot of people kind of think, I've got to have it all shiny, all singing and dancing yeah. and then do this massive launch and then it becomes such a big thing you don't do it in the end yeah. so, that's so it was like the first step so that's it what made you take that first step it locked down i think i think having more time to think about my work and that my work actually had a worth and it was not just stuff that i needed to keep in my head and actually feels better when it's out so it gave you time to reflect. Massively, yeah. Yeah. Sheila Minion. Oh, hello. She's Sheila Minion. Uh, she started, um, she's a roller skating disco star. I thought I'd heard the name. Yeah, no. She, yeah, she's, yeah. And her name was in, we found that tag. So that is Sheila. So is she still Minion. a reigning champion or oh, was God, this yeah, in absolutely. days gone by? No, no, oh, no, no still. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's, she has to be careful. She can't hang about with the rest of them because her, her, her legs are insured for a lot of money. <laughs> well, it surprised me she's on that, that top shelf then, yeah. Louise. Yeah, well, she likes to be the top, doesn't she? Well, yeah. that's it. That's our Sheila, isn't it? That's our Sheila. Oh, well, thank you for... Uh, that's all right. ...telling me their stories. Oh, slouching. So... Oh. Yeah. Now, I think she looks like Maggie Thatcher. Others say Mary Berry. I'm not sure. But is this is this a casualty? Don't know what you're laughing at, Christy. <laughs> is this an art casualty of experimental contemporary practice? Yes, unfortunately, she didn't um, come out very well of the experiment. She's <laughs> She had a bit of a traumatic day yesterday. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
So what's, what's your favourite technique or material? I'm a bit of a, I like lots of different things. I love monoprinting. Love why, it. Why does you love monoprinting? Because it's just exciting. And especially the kind of just ink it up, stick it on top, do something random and see what it is. Yeah. And generally it's nothing. But sometimes it's something. Do you think, now I might be looking too deep into this, but when you were just talking before about how you started to sneak your work in, and if people found you, you were lucky, mm. kind of thing. And you'd left it open to chance. And like mono printing is a really chancy kind of technique. Yeah. Do you find it takes the pressure off a little bit if you, you work and you're not exactly sure of the results? Oh yeah, definitely. Does, and does that make you feel braver? Makes me feel a lot braver. You see, that, that is really interesting. That's because a lot of people, they don't feel like they want to start unless they know the result. Yeah, and that's really, I've always found that really difficult, but by not, by taking that away, because you have got no control over what's underneath when you start, mm. and actually, it's like that blank piece of paper thing. Do something else, so do something random, and that randomness actually can work, not all the time, Yeah, but, it's better that it doesn't because then when it does it's more exciting and sometimes when it doesn't it's even better than what you thought it could be yes it can always turn into something else it's very deep because that could be about life oh, i'm really lounging now how long we got <laughs> well i hope you enjoyed that just a quick goodbye thanks ever so much for watching oh quick quick custard cream i I'm, I'm promise i'm gonna vary the biscuits soon but quick custard cream and uh if you enjoyed it cheeky subscribe if you don't mind um and i'll see you again soon thanks again louise you were a star